Hello everyone, my name is Defamius and in this video I'll give you the best starter tips when you start a new game in Bannerlord. But before we begin, many of you who are watching my videos are still not subscribed to my channel. It would mean a ton for me if you would smash that like and subscribe button. Anyway, let's get going. It's really hard to max out skills in Bannerlord. In the start, you'll get plenty of levels, but if you don't have max stats and have maxed out focus points, you'll find out that it'll still take a long time to max them, and they're probably the only thing you can max during a full gameplay. That's why it's important that you plan ahead of what kind of character you want. You can plan ahead by visiting this webpage. The best thing is to focus on perks within the same stats like the horizontal line. When you start your campaign, you'll spawn near a city. You'll notice that you'll start with some gear depending on your choices during your character creation, but will always have 1000 gold. You can actually sell your civilian gear, increasing your starting gold with almost 50%. In the start, you'll find that looters can be tricky when you start trying to recruit people and trade. At least it was for me. But then I found out that if you have a horse, a bow and three quivers, you can easily kill 10-20 to 20 looters alone by kiting. No more hassle of them taking you as prisoner. No more soldiers who you just recruited dying. You most likely get some stones in your face, but hey, you can now 1v20. You may find yourself thinking that you only make money by killing other people and taking their loot to sell. Actually, if you combine that with trading from town to town, you'll net an insane amount. Trading can easily give you 5 to 10k profit per town jumping and is a means that you should not be ignored in early to mid game. You may have noticed that sometimes you run fast and sometimes you run slow. It took me a while to find out what actually affects speed. There are two types of horses that I'd like to, you to know about. There are the horses that help you carry stuff, those are stumper horses and mules, and the other horses that make your units run faster. General rule of thumb, having cavalry in your party increases your speed. The horses that make you run faster can be given to your footmen, meaning that the more footmen on horses, the more fast your party moves, up to 1 to 1 ratio. On the other hand, if you have too many horses or too many mules and stumper horses, you'll get the herb status and decrease your speed. And finally, if you're carrying more than your men and horses combined can carry, it will also affect your speed negatively. When recruiting units, you'll sometimes notice that sometimes you can recruit a lot and sometimes none. It took me a while that all this depends on your reputation with the given local lord. The higher you have, the more you can recruit. So next time you plan to raid a city or village, make sure it's units you don't plan to recruit and else remember to do them quest gear. As previously pointed out, reputation is important to make the game easy in the long run. There are many different ways to increase it. You can do quests for local lords like villages and cities, all other nobles, their clan, assist villagers when they attack and many other things. The two other ways to gain reputation that I want to emphasize is hideouts and releasing nobles. Every time you clear a hideout and preferably with quest, you actually gain reputation with local nobles near the hideout. So there's a lot of reason to do it. Second is every time you capture a noble, if you let them go, you'll get reputation with the clan. It's an easy way to get reputation and level up charm skill. When going to hideouts, it took me a while to figure out that Bowman has fire at will disabled, so they would usually suicide and kill himself. So remember to enable it when you are in range and not just make them charge into their death. Alternatively, have shielded units in and put in shield wall and charge. That's also pretty effective. Also, at the end when giving the choice to duel the bandit leader, just accept it. If you have your melee weapon out, you can actually one shot of him before he gets his shield out.
Looking for companions can suck, and I literally ran from town to town. It was until I found out that you can press N to search for kingdoms, heroes, etc. So if you click N, then heroes, then wanderers, you can look up all companions you can recruit. The last name usually indicates what they specialize in. The engineer is an example of a companion who excels in engineering. I'll leave a link of a list in the comments below. A wise man once said that to become rich, you must increase the amount of income sources, and the same logic is in Bannerlord. You can make passive money to help your economy early to mid game. There are two types of passive income caravans and workshops. You can make companions from caravans so they can go from town to town to trade and generate money for you. This will usually cost around 15k and needs to be started in a town. Workshops can be bought between 10 to 15k as well and has to be in town as well, but does not require a companion. I covered workshops in my other video and you can watch it in the card up here and I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Later, you can become a mercenary and get money every time you gain influence from killing enemy units. And much later, you can start getting thief, which will net you tax monies. To make your own clan more powerful, you can make companions form their own parties. This has many advantages. You yourself and the kingdom you are part of are more visible on the map. This is also a fantastic way for you to create armies as it costs zero influence to call in your own clan and a perfect way to level up leadership as well. Also, it's a way to gain influence at the same time because being in an army and having clan members in an army gives you free influence. Just be careful with cost though as you have to pay the wages as well, so make sure you have a great income to sustain all wages. And that's basically the best starter card I wish I knew when I started out. Did you know all these or were there other facts you wish you knew when you started? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I get a new video out. Also make sure to check my free other Let's Play series out. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. See ya!